to work. We have distinguished uh, participants. It is uh, a great honor for me to be here today as a new rector of the United Nations University, whose objectives correspond to Mr. Nakata Atsuhito's commitment to peace and democracy. While United Nations presence has been almost evident in every country through the peace building process, it has been more prominent in some countries than others. As the largest host to UN volunteers, with 49% in 2021, up 9% over 2020, Africa, where I come from, has shown remarkable progress. From the Lusaka ceasefire agreement to the Sun City agreement, all of which were facilitated under UN guidance, particularly the Sun City Agreement, by the former Secretary General of the UN, Mr. Kofi Annan, and the Special Envoy, uh, Mr. Mustafa Niyase. While not every country has experienced a UN presence on a large scale, I would like to draw attention to South Africa, where I come from. The Democratic Republic of Congo is one of the top three recipients of UN volunteers, with 600 UN volunteers under the United Nations Organization Stabilization Mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo, with a total of 21 programs, funds, and specialized agencies. The UN Mission in Congo has also provided humanitarian assistance for those in most need. Despite all efforts, Africa remains a continent that requires substantial progress, which can only occur through the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. The United Nations identified 17 global goals under the SDG, including SDG 6, that have been most relevant to Africa. The first one is poverty. With 41% of population living below poverty line in Africa, SDG 1 must be met to provide long-term development. This is particularly urgent given Africa's size of more than 1.3 billion people. The second one, hunger. Food insecurity and malnutrition are pervasive in many African countries. Therefore, the successful implementation of SDG 2 will positively impact food security and nutrition. Education, access and quality of education are major challenges that have to be uh, tackled in the African continent uh, because they're important. It is even more important given the fact that uh, the bulk of the population is actually young requiring uh, education. And of course, uh, this will require uh, building uh, new institutions that will be to reach people uh, who cannot be reached by the brick and mortar institutions. So the role of digital uh, based education becomes very, very important given the scale of the need that is uh, required. Of course, on, ed on education, because of uh, the complexity and the fast-changing world in which we live in, uh, uh, lifelong learning opportunities for all is very, very important, not only for the African continent, but for all the continents. Because uh, uh, the pace at which uh, technology is changing requires uh, nations, uh, nation states, uh, to also learn faster, uh, learn, relearn, unlearn, and relearn again, uh, something that is very important for uh, uh, all communities to have a stage uh, in the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth thing, clean water. The lack of access to clean water and sanitation is a significant challenge in many countries, affecting health, education, and economic development. Implementing SDG 6, which ensures efficient and sustainable water and sanitation management for all, is absolutely very, very crucial. Energy. Access to reliable energy is essential for poverty reduction, economic development, and environmental sustainability. 
The bulk of energy in many countries is actually obtained from coal. And of course, as we deal with the issues of climate change, which we must, uh, we have to find alternative ways and if we generate any. Of course, we have technologies already, technologies such as solar uh, energy and so on and so forth, but they are not, uh, they are not affordable. Uh, many, even in the most developed countries, cannot be able to afford uh, to uh, implement these solutions. And we need to, therefore, work with manufacturers of, uh, of, of, of climate change technologies, particularly in the energy sector, so that we can be able to uh, deal with um, this sustainable development goal seven uh, and ensure that everyone has access to affordable, reliable, but sustainable modern energy. And there's the issue of sustainable cities. Uh, while uh, the African continent where I come from is uh, growing rapidly, urbanization, infrastructure, and environmental uh, sustainability remain major challenges. So I think in SDG 11, which aims to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, and sustainable, is absolutely crucial for sustainable development. To implement such strategies efficiently, member states have recognized the value of voluntarism as an effective method for Agenda 2023. This is because UNVs are important in mobilizing and expanding support by engaging citizens in the national planning and implementation of the SDGs, designed to simply to simplify UNVs work. We can even use tools such as artificial intelligence. And this has been recognized as one of the key components of ach uh, ach achieving sustainable development goals. Since uh, UN mobilizes volunteers worldwide to support development projects, AI can enhance even this work by providing tools to make volunteers work more efficient. As an example, AI can be used to analyze development data identify development needs, and provide recommendations for future interventions. Furthermore, it is imperative that uh, the use of AI must serve the purposes that are ethical and morally justified, not to harm the well-being of humanity and the environmental impact on the ecosystem of the Earth. Just recently, uh, one of my countrymen, uh, Elon Musk has just uh, made a statement that we have to stop the technological development. I don't think the solution is to stop the technological development. I think the solution is to, uh, is to educate our lawmakers to be able to understand these technologies and craft laws so that they can protect the people. I think it is to educate our population so that they understand this, these technologies, uh, their benefits, and also their harms, and make sure that uh, uh, we protect our people. I think uh, uh, organizations such as uh, the United Nations, for example, UNESCO, has uh, ethical, guide, ethical guidelines for the use of AI, must be implemented urgently and effectively, so that these technologies do not become other tools that harm human beings, but they become tools that advance the well-being of humanity of, of, of our world. So we need therefore need to respect and care for the community of life. Second, we need to ensure that the social and economic justice actually happens. And this obviously means that uh, uh, technologies that are effective in development must be diffused across the board so that uh, all of us can benefit from, from these technologies rather than few countries benefiting from them and others being relegated to the margins of development. Thirdly, non-violence and peaceful resolution, and I have worked there, <coughs> Uh, quite a bit on the use of technologies to be able to predict conflicts before they exist, so that we can be able to prevent them, so that we can be able to
to, uh, 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 to, 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 to put people on the table before uh, the escalation of a conflict. And finally, <coughs> ecological integrity is very, very important. One of the issues that I am paying quite a bit of attention to, great deal of attention to, is the fate of island states in the in the midst of uh, rising sea levels, uh, uh, what needs to be done? It is clear that whatever needs to be done, and we know what needs to be done, must be done now. It was supposed to have been done even long time ago. We have to uh, we have to adopt uh, practices that that actually deal with the issue of uh, of, of global warming. Uh, because uh, the harm that it is going to do to us, all of us, um, uh, is far too great to contemplate. As we have gathered today in memory of Mr. Nakata, a district electoral supervisor for Cambodia, it is imperative that we pay attention to how we can minimize the risk of such incidents. This is one of many cases that demonstrate the need for change in the UN process of promoting peace and democratic values, values that seem almost impossible to attain, especially in this era of great conflicts. Despite all that, it is time for more advanced implementations of the UN's objectives through SDGs and AI strategies, which will pose fewer risks to volunteers and staff. Having said that, I would like to express my gratitude to Kyoto University of the Arts for providing us with a very important forum uh, for strategic uh, discussions that ultimately should lead to the reforms in our multilateral organization. I am confident that the Kyoto Peace Building Center will play a pivotal role in raising public awareness on peace and democracy process. Also, I would like to commend the Japanese government and these people for being among the largest donors to to where I come from, the African continent, where they contribute more than 30 billion dollars last just last year. On behalf of the United Nations University, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude uh, to uh, all of you who are here, uh, to the Kyoto uh, Peace Building Center, to the Kyoto University of the Arts, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, to Japan Parliamentary Committee of the Diet of Japan. And I look forward to discussing with you how you and volunteers can make a greater impact on the world in a more secure environment and, and to do so efficiently. I conclude by paying my homage to Mr. Nakata. Thank you, Andato Hosei Master.